around the no fuss garden, the main no fuss garden. And today's episode is going to be a brutal, a brutal part of being a vegetable breeder. And what I mean by that is I'm going to do a final cull of several of these cucurbits. I'm going to take this line here and remove every one that I don't like. Uh, there's no point in it growing. I don't want to eat it. I have tons of the, uh, the other good squash up there to eat. Uh, the hybrid of mine, Madison's Choice. So I don't need these. And uh, it's kind of a distraction anyway, taking up space. And I will keep the one that I want to keep from that. And then this line here, these are all my butternuts. I'm going to cull everything. That way the bees are only going to work the ones that I want them to work. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make some culls. Let me think here for just a minute. Is there anything else I'm culling? Uh, yes, there's one other, and that is my zucchini. I made an initial cull because they could. there were a couple that couldn't take the heat, so I just tossed them out, and I have a couple more culls to do. Actually, I took out all of those over there. And there's only like three more or four more over here that I'm going to remove. So that's what we're going to do today. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the ones here that I don't like. All right, I'm going to keep this plant right here. Now this is a vining plant. You can see here that it, it's putting a baby on in every node. And it's a viner. It's not a super heavy duty viner like a butternut or a melon over there. But it's vining. And I want to be able to grow it um, up in a greenhouse or in a around a cage or something like that. So I've selfed this. That's why it's got a... A piece of tape I even put an S in it but usually it's just that and um, ooh, I started it looks like it may have even have cracked I need to be careful with this so not to break that off um, but <clears throat> this has got seed in it that I want to keep and this isn't ideal what I was looking for was something like this with a pattern on it that nice pattern uh, but I've got all kinds of um, well I'll show you some in a minute that I call out and, uh, but I've got all kinds of yellow and green mixed. This one initially didn't have a lot of yellow, but later on it started getting like little spots here and there. So it is very productive in that it, it puts a squash at every single node and it binds the medium amount I want. Not too aggressive and not bush. It also has tons of male flowers. I mean tons and it branches a good bit too. You can see another branch back there with some babies on it and some more uh, squash growing out that way. If I want to grow like around the cage, I can let several vines go around and then I can cut the older leaves off and the new vines going around will provide the plant, the, uh, the uh, provide the leaves and plant uh, the energy to the plant to produce the fruit. Anyway, that'll also help with uh, old leaves getting worn out and stuff like that. It's something that I've discovered. I don't see any insect pressure at all. Um, it's the time of year where there's not a whole lot of it, but it could also be the uh, plant itself has a better um, capability to ward off insects, but no squash bugs. I uh, don't see any anything, no bugs on it actually. There probably is some, um, some things like the cucumber beetle, but lots of, this is the plant that I want. And even though it's got yellow on it, which I don't like, I'm hoping the next generation I can continue the productivity and either get an all green example or potentially even an all yellow example. But what I don't want um, is a bicolor, a yellow and a green. So if next generation, if I can't get one of those two examples, all yellow or all green with the beautiful pattern on it, like this, then I will kill off the whole grow and I'll go back to the generation before this one and we will try to grow some more. You know, we're across the two siblings. This plant right next to it is similar, it's behaving similar, but it's not nearly as productive. So it is getting removed and it's just that simple. I'll take it over here and we will throw it 
on the other side of the fence and then I will put it in an area back over in the woods over there somewhere when I'm done so next fruit or next plant this plant not as productive it doesn't have a round shape it's got some oval to it it's also bicolor just no way with this plant all right I'm just gonna filter through real quick just to show you why I'm removing it way too much color by color don't want it you got a green one here it doesn't have the good the nice shape and it's not as productive too much color not enough production way too much color wrong shape and finally little production and um, wrong, it's not the ideal shape I could have lived with that shape but it's very little production so all these are gonna go and I'll bring it back and show you what it looks like when it's all done there's the plants removed and they're all gone now except this one example it cleans things up it helps me sort things better and I don't need it anyway so that's why we're doing this so here's a remaining plant now I could break that or cut that off and just let the seed mature seed squash mature but what I want to do is I want to keep getting the fruit if I can it'll pollinate with Madison's Choice over there both are what's called cucurbitae um, pepo pepo which is uh, the species of the, of most squash um, but anyway it can cross with them but and it won't affect the fruit at all when you when you have a plant that crosses with another plant it does nothing and absolutely nothing to the growing generation it's only the seed within the fruit that's planted the next year and that is another generation so the seed in this fruit is next generation it's not this generation so anyway what I'm saying by that is a lot of people misunderstand that they think that crossing <clears throat> uh, fruit crossing from another one will affect the growing generation it doesn't anyway so what I want to do is I want to uh, also test these I want to eat them and see how they taste now I'm going to go down the line and I'm going to take and bend over and just talk about each one of these quickly and yank them as I go. These are my butternuts. This is from the one um, butternut I called another butter. It's a tentative name. But uh, the reason why I like that squash because it has such compact vines. And a lot of these examples have compact vines. So let's go down and we'll talk about each one. I can't remember each one specifically till I see it. But I check these every single day almost. So let's look at some of these. This one is a good example. This is lawnmower cutting grass all over it. It's a good example. It's got a fruit on it. It's got another one coming on. It's not impressively productive, but there is some potential. So it's a keeper. Um, this one here is uh, a different color. It's a really light color. And it's got short vines. I'm going to go ahead and keep that one. This one's got longer vines, but it has a nice size uh, squash on it. So I'll leave this one. It's not real long. I'll leave this as a potential. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take this one because it's not putting a squash at every node. And I don't like that. So let's go ahead and take that one. That's how I do it. <laughs> this one uh, it has a longer squash really short vine i don't see where it's very productive i'm gonna go ahead and yank this one okay this one has got multiple vines on it uh, a little longer vine but i see a fruit there and a nice shaped maturing fruit there uh, i'll wait a couple more days and see if i want to pull this one this one the neck is too short this is the seed cavity it's to get to good flesh you'd have to cut around the seed cavity and it's only got one on it well it's got a couple babies there so ultimately i don't like the shape of that one so it's got to go this one it's got a little longer vine it does have a nice long neck uh, which that's all good flesh right there because the seed cavity again is in here um there are a couple babies but since it's setting this one i'm gonna go ahead and yank this one i decided right here now talking to you i thought the squash was cool but we're gonna yank it anyway all right this one has got lots of branching 
I like that. It's not branching out very far, but I don't see any squash set at this point. Oh, there it is over there, and the vine is too long. So this one's got to go. <laughs> not many are making it, are they? <laughs> okay, this one is really cool. I like the way this looks. I like the shape of it because the seed cavity is going to be down here, and that's a lot of meat right there. I like the coloration of it. Um, it's got some of these here, and uh, I think there's another another one down the line there. I'll show you in just a minute. A nice size shape one here. The vines are compact and multiple. It's a keeper. Okay, a little bit long vine. Uh, small neck here. This part up. Too small. And all of this one is nice. Um, it's binding a little bit too much, so we're going to yank that one. Okay, this one is vining a little bit too much for my taste. Um, it's only got the two squash on it, it's got to go. All right, let's see here. Um, looks like the melons are attached to it. It's only got two on it. And it's vining too much, it's got to go too. Okay, this one is cool. This one has got two neat examples on it. The vine is a little long for my taste, um, but we're gonna we're gonna keep this one uh, for the shape of the fruit here and potential mix with other butternuts uh, may pro provide something nice potentially in the next generation. Okay, this one. Um, I'm gonna look here. It's uh, it's got a good shape to the fruit and got a couple fruit. We're gonna go a little, wait a little bit longer on this one. Fruit's not ideal and it's vining too much. There we go. All right. Okay. Great fruit set on this one. The vine's a little long, but it's got lots of fruit on each node, and production always gets my attention every time. If there's a good producer, um, I don't toss it right away. I see some ants down there. Some first sign of some bugs. So we'll go ahead and we'll keep this one for now. Production always gets my attention. Small skinny neck. Even though it has hardly any vine on it, it's gotta go. Same with this one. Small skinny neck. Gotta go. I don't see any bugs on these two as I'm doing this with you. If you see some, you can let me know. All right, poor production, gotta go. Okay, this has got another one of those little shaped, kind of unique shape I kind of like. Um, Binding is not too, too drastic. Production may be slim, although there is a baby on it here and here, and a dried up one here. So we'll, we'll leave that one for now. So let's take a look down the line. And you can see we killed off a lot of them. Out there are the ones that I killed off. Cold, that's what I like to say. It's not as nasty a term, cold. I had three zucchini here, actually four. There's a fourth one there. And I didn't like any of them, so I yanked them up. Two of them, two or three of them didn't perform well in the heat. If you can't take the heat as a squash, as zucchini, you're not going to make it in my garden. you got to be able to take the heat. So I've got one example right over here. And that's not powdery mildew. That's some squash. Whoop, hit the camera. Some squash make that model leaf um, shape. Um, this one, I'm going to keep my eye on. It's got its setting. I don't particularly care for. Oh, I saw a cucumber beetle. There you go. There he is. Spotted cucumber beetle. I don't like them, uh, but I'll let them continue to do what they're doing. If they, if a plant's too weak, if it can't survive the cucumber beetle, um, provided there's just not an overwhelming infestation of them, then they they don't make the cut either. 
So yeah, I've got a lot of flowers on this one, which is good, male flowers for pollinating. And um, the shape's not ideal here, but I've got some pretty good examples here. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this one for now. Here's the other two examples. And this one, you can see I've got a pollinating bag on it just to keep, the, it looks like it's actually even rotting in there, which isn't good. I wonder why. Anyway, um, the leaves here, that right there I didn't notice, but their leaves are stippled. But I don't see any bugs on them anywhere. And it's, I see a couple of the leaves that, that way, but the rest look healthy, you know? Something going on there too. This plant is likely going to get killed off for that very reason. And in fact, I'm going to do that for sure. I'm going to do it right now. Ah, even though it looked like a, I had done it for the possibility. I'll get rid of that in a second. Um, this one looks like it's doing the same thing. And it's just not looking real pretty, but it, there's no disease. I mean, there's no insects on it that I see. It could be related to nutrients, but I gauge it by how the other plants are growing, too. And it's Madison's Choice, and it seems to fare well with disease and bugs like Madison's Cross, its parent. And so that's what that one's kind of a unfair one to compare it to this. Uh, because it's uh, it's not doing that great. Yep, so I've made a decision now. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get rid of all of these grows from the zucchini and go back to the generation that I got that this seed came from and try to regrow a whole bunch more. All right, everybody. It's a little leaner in there now. This is Brent. See you later. Well, that wraps up this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please comment, like, and subscribe. In order to subscribe, all you got to do is click the button here. We'll put a check mark next to it. If you want to get notification the next time I make a video, click on the bell here. Check here and hit save. You guys take care.